Two teams desperately looking for a win battle it out on the softball diamond in a game that came down to the final at bat. Welcome to Sportswire. I'm Will Catter. Well, when it comes to spring sports, several county teams steal the spotlight and for good reason. Some of them like Freeman Girls Lacrosse, Deep Run Soccer, Goblin Freeman, Glen Allen Baseball. Just to name a few, these programs have been at or near the top of their selective sports, sometimes not only in the 804, but also in the state. That's not the case with Verina versus Tucker softball. Verina came into the game against Tucker with three wins. Tucker only had two. But both programs are building their way up, and both could use a defining win to capture that momentum. And before the dust would settle, one team would do exactly that. The Fighting Haley Butlers in Verina take their act to the road, taking on the Tucker Tigers, and right away this game got spicy. Freshman pitcher on the mound, Kendall Shockley, and the outfielder in left and swirling wins. Namaya Moore just makes a Willie Mays catch. For everyone who doesn't know the Willie Mays catch, Google Willie Mays catch. That's exactly what she did. Caught it over her shoulder. And then Shockley, again, I said a pitcher, gets a strikeout. So Tucker takes care of business. And, I, you know, sometimes defensive plays sparks a team. Because then Shockley, slap hitter, gets a base hit. Back comes Haley Butler trying to work around that. Gets a strikeout there. But that dog will hunt. It's a base hit and gets past a right fielder. It's number four doing the honors. Emily Bryant. She knocks home. Shockley ends up at third base. 2 nothing. Tucker. How about some play by the catcher for Verina? What a move. What a job by Willow Nash. So we've seen web gems on both sides. And then this is a weird play. Ball just outside and low. They have the double steal on, does J.R. Tucker. They try to make a throw. It goes into the dugout. That means both runners advance. Runner at third comes home to score. Runner at second goes to third. Yeah, second and third. I don't know if they missed a sign, if there was a bunt squeeze on. Either way, the run counts. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. They have a 2-0 lead after Haley Butler gets the high cheese strikeout. I'm supposed to try to challenge her on uh, hitting her and seeing her live. I don't think that's going to happen. Number 21, or at least I don't think I'm going to make it. With the hit there, Michaela Sharon, but a great play in outfield. Lily Cole, and I'm telling you, the winds were swirling, so that was not a routine play at all. The freshman still dealing, gets a strike out there. Haley Butler coming right back and trying to make up for that two spots you gave up in the first back-to-back -back Ks. And then, so the freshman's got a matcher. She was doing work as she strikes out. Number 11, Shellen Workman, and then handles the defense herself. Pop up, I got it. No problems. Tucker, later, trying to add on. That dog will hunt. That's a slap single, which turns into a double. So Kendall Shockley, two for two, and doing Yeaman's like work in the circle. Later, at third, wild pitch, or actually, pass ball. She comes around to score. It's 3-0 in the third. Verina, though, would come back. Runner at second base and a bloop single's going to score the run. Here she comes. She is in. Verina on the board. It is now 3-1. And yeah, it was cold, so put the sweatshirts on. 3-1. Bottom four. We go to the fifth now. Haley Butler gets the hit and some great Base running the boot. She ends up on second base. Blue Devils in business. Here's a ground ball to third. The throw to first. Not picked by the first baseman. Haley Butler alertly scores. And the runner at first alertly goes to second. So it's an RBI and now it's three to two. Tucker in need to change the momentum. They need to. And they do. Runner on. Guess who? It's Shockley again. It's an RBI double for Verena Shockley scores as that ate up the first baseman. So they do get the insurance run back. It's now 4-2. Tucker has a two-run lead. However, here comes Verena. Base hit. Runner already on. She's going to head to third, and she is going to slide in safely. And not only that, the ball went into the dugout, so that means the runners get to advance. And all of a sudden, number 21, Michaela Sharon, scores. 
It's a one-run game again. Ground ball to first. They get the out at first. But number 77, Camille Campbell, who got that last hit, scores the game time run. 4-4. We go to the seven. Still tied. It's Haley time. Goes off the bottom of the mitt. And that time, Haley Butler and Verina, she's going to go all the way home. From home to home, back where it came from. And Butler and Verina take a 5-4 lead. But how Shockley would respond was paramount to the Tigers' success. Hit by a pitch, Verina has the bases loaded and less than two outs. Only one out. She got the first one. And then the second one, strike him out, sit him down, let's go, she says. So the Tigers still have a chance, trailing by one. Last opportunity in the seventh. What would happen, number 17? Slap single, and it gets past the outfielder again, a wicked hop. Brianna Trujillo, and Trujillo is trouble for the Blue Devils. She gets all the way to third base, and that would lead to this. Butler, the slap hit. Is it going to fall in? It will. Shockley delivers again. And Tucker again. Shockley all the way to third. And just from third to home, away from winning the game, they've tied it back up at five. What do they do? They walk both batters to force a force out at any base. But the ground ball is an infield single. They don't get the out. Lily Cole delivers. And the Tigers win it in a walk-off. Six to five, your final. I'm just looking to get the ball in play to get a run home. <laughs> just to get the win, that's all I'm looking for, yeah. I'll be there. Yeah, I listen to my dad, and I just think we got to stay in this game. So I can't make freshman mistakes. i got to be a leader. Not many freshman mistakes on this night. See what happens when you listen to your dad. Tucker gets the win. Meanwhile, in ladies' soccer, Deep Run has ruled the roost again this season, but Glenn Allen and Freeman are not too far behind. The Jags, winless in their first three games, came into Friday night winners of their last six matches. Freeman had won eight of their last nine. It was a rematch from early in the season where the final outcome was a 1-1 draw. If either team could find the victory in this match, it would set them up well when the postseason gets underway. It's a rainy Friday night at Glen Allen Freeman versus Glen Allen Part 2. As I said, first match early in the year ended in a 1-1 draw. Freeman with the first chance to score, and they beat the keeper. But it just goes wide of the net. Still no score. More first-half highlights. Glen Allen putting on the pressure this time, and it's slippery out there, so any shot on net's got a shot. Keeper takes care of that one. Here comes Freeman. They did a good job with possession in the first half for the most part. Keeper does an amazing job getting a foot on that. And then even more amazing, perhaps, just a heady play by the defender, though. They're kicking the ball off of Freeman's leg for a goal kick. Here come the Mavs again. Not to be deterred. Shot just goes high and wide. Still no score. Lots of action. Wide open game. So lots of attack. We like to see that in soccer. You know, little action. Here comes a little action. Jags on the move. Great looking pass. And then the shot. She shoots, she scores! Right off the mitt and into the back of the net. Abby Castevens does the dirty work and it's 1 0. Glenn Allen with 10 minutes to go in the first. But Freeman would come right back. Nice looking corner, oh, and it, the header just goes wide. More from the Mavs. I said they kind of controlled the pace and the ball. In terms of time of possession, they were in attack mode. A lot of this first half, watch the centering pass and the boot. Beautiful goal, she shoots, she scores. Number 13, Walker Bristow knots it back up at one with two minutes to go in the half. It would be 1-1 at the end of the half. Second half, nice stop by Glenn Allen's keeper, but the line judge ruled, the official ruled that it went out. They actually got a corner on that. Glenn Allen would stay away from danger there. Looking to go up 2-1 are the Jags. Important moment here. Oh, keeper comes in, gets the back leg of the attacker for Glenn Allen. Ref says, yup, nodding his head, yes. That is a penalty kick. And it would lead to this. 
She shoots, fires, finds a magnet. She shoots, she scores. Emma Seacat puts Glenn Allen back on top, and it's a 2-1 game. The sophomore center mid and then the keeper for the Jaguars had to have a nice, clean game. Gets a stop there. Jags, a two-goal lead would be huge. Freeman says no. Nice stop. She had a number of them as well. Ironically, in the second half, it was as if Glenn Allen had turned the page on Freeman. They had the possession. Nice footwork here to get a shot on net. And, oh, if that had bounced one more time, Glenn Allen was there. Freeman says no. Now the Mavs know they need to get an equalizer, tie this thing up at two, and they would bring an onslaught of attacking. Check this out. This is just hard work. Keeping the ball, keeping possession, getting the shot on goal, albeit it was deflected and right to the keeper. More Mavs, though. They are not done. Not yet. Centering pass. Johnny in the spot. Keeper is there. Number 29, Rice Kaplinger. Really, the senior was solid. Kaplinger. Knocking it away. This is dangerous. Kavlinger comes in, picks it up. Mavs running out of time here. They need a goal. What a good ball, though. There's going to be a centering pass. Kaplinger is there. Dives in front and gets the stop. Moments later, here come the Mavs again. All Mavs late in the second. The shot. Kaplinger right there and right on her. And then finally, seconds ticking away. Free kick from the 18-yard mark. Goes way wide. And Glenn Allen survives and gets the victory, beating the Freeman Mavericks at home. A huge win for the Lady Jags. They take this one. Final score, Glenn Allen 2, Freeman 1. We have baseball and girls lacrosse action when we come back. Deep Run has a home tilt on the diamond as they look to hammer Hermitage. Plus, the defending state champion Freeman Mavericks face off with Deep Run and ladies lacrosse. Highlights are straight ahead. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. Welcome back to Sports Wire. Time for a little baseball at Deep Run. Taking on the Hermitage. Panthers, Parker Noonan on the mound for Deep Run. Sent right back where it came from. Number one, Aiden Dickinson with a base hit, but Noonan was uh, dealing. He gets a strikeout there. Hermitage does get the stolen base. So runner at second comes right back in with the cheese. Gets Cooper Townsend down and then outside corner. Strike him out. Sit him down. Noonan striking out the side. Bottom one. Christian Cisneros on the mound and getting some help from his defense. Nice job and left. Number 14 doing the honor. Samaj Adams. But the deep run bats, they came to play. Number 12, Sam Bennett getting it started in the first with a single right there, hard hit. And then boom, this guy brings out the boomstick. Josiah Segwin, all the way to the wall. Run comes around to score in Bennett. And the triple sets up deep run with a 1-0 lead. It would lead to this. They weren't done. Trey Gouch. Just doing a job. Long fly ball to center, scores Segwin, and deep run. Just like that has a two to nothing lead. Christian looking for the strikeout, does get it. Cisnerios does get a K in that first. It'd be two nothing Wildcats. They would go to their bullpen moving forward. Uh, Wildcats did not need to go to their bullpen because Parker Noonan was still dealing. Strikeout there. Cheddar gets a strikeout, swing in there. Noonan taking care of batters. Five of the six batters he faced struck him out. Actually, five of the seven. One of them got a base hit in the first two innings. Speaking of base hits, Wildcats right where they left off in the second inning. Vinny Pocaro with a single. 
And then this ball's got a chance. It is high. It is far. It is off the wall. Jeffrey Simaglia plates a runner. And the Wildcats with an RBI double by Simaglia. Deep run in a business. That ball is hammered to deep right. That almost gets all the way to the wall. And this time, number four, Cam Rizzo. No relation to Anthony Rizzo, at least I don't think. RBI on that play, and deep run was, well, hitting, hitting the ball right back where it came from in this instance. Number 12, getting in on the act, Sam Bennett. Another RBI for him. He drives home Rizzo, and Wildcats scoring at will here. Still not finished. That is a fly ball to right, and a nice play. Nice play by Hermitage in left, and good job tracking the ball in the right field as well. Still, damage done. Four runs, and Wildcats up 6 nothing. and more Noonan. Another strikeout for Noonan. He gets Hermitage swinging there and then ties up the batter. They appeal to see if he swung. He did. He went around. All Noonan, all deep run. 10 nothing is your fun. Let's head to Ladies Lacrosse, shall we? At Freeman, two-time defending state champions, back-to-back -back champs. Come into this one with a six and two record, looking for more. She shoots, she scores. Grace Moore, you'll see a whole lot more of Grace Moore. Freeman with the early lead. You're also gonna see a lot of Bridget Wilson, and then the pass to Moore, and Moore leads deep, run to nothing on the scoreboard. Freeman, as I said, only two losses. One was to Collegiate, okay, private school, and then the other was a one-goal loss to Albemarle, who they could see in states, perhaps. She shoots, she scores. Bridget Wilson delivers. Freeman in good shape. Then off the restart, off the penalty, one more Wilson, you got her. Fires, finds the back of the net. It's the Wilson and Moore show, as the Mavs can not be stopped. At this point, they're up four Nothing, there would be more. More. Off the restart. Wilson! So Moore and Wilson accounting for all of Freeman's goals. Midfielders really know how to get it done at Freeman. Then, patience is a virtue, especially when you got a lead in lacrosse, especially when it's a big lead. And then you can do this. Firing, finding the back of the net. She goes wide and hits her target. Bridget Wilson once again. And they called a timeout after that one. Freeman winning every ball on faceoff so they could do this, set up their offense, and being able to score on your own, setting up picks. She shoots, she scores, it's Moore again. And Grace Moore and Bridget Wilson having a field day in this one. Deep run is not a bad lacrosse team by any stretch. Just Freeman is pretty doggone good. Moore again, this time she goes low, she shoots, she scores. And yeah, if you look at the scoreboard, that's no lie, it's eight nothing at this point. Finally, deep run with a chance here. This is a beautiful move, by the way. Nice deep, great shot, the keeper is right there. Zara Isik, making her presence felt. They didn't need her too much. And then more from Freeman. Finally, someone not named Moore or Wilson. It's number 13, Ella Davis. Senior midfielder puts that one in. And you want more Ella Davis, you got it. She fires, finds it back to the net. Ella Davis putting her name in the score ledger right there. Two straight goals. You want more Davis, here comes Davis again. This time she's looking for somebody, looking, she's looking. She finds and she fires and she shoots and she scores. Grace Moore. Freeman Mavs putting on a clinic in this one against their rivals in the West End. Freeman still up huge. Ella Davis sees an opening and finds the back of the net. She shoots, she scores. Mavs completely dominating the first half. 12 nothing at this point. Switching sides, a little bit of first half action. Freeman, great pass inside. It's Davis again. The law offices of Davis, Moore, and Wilson take control. 17 to four is your final. The Freeman ladies are not the only dominant lacrosse team for the Mavericks. The guys team has been awfully strong as well. 
and they look to keep it that way when they faced off with James River. Plus, Tucker takes to the baseball diamond when Powhatan comes calling. Highlights next. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Welcome back to Sports Wire, back to lacrosse and the Freeman guys. We talked about the girls earlier having an excellent record and uh, back to back state titles. Freeman guys do not have back to back state titles, but they came into this one against James River with an 8 2 record. You saw the nice save by the keeper early and a flick in the wrist, and that's all it takes. He shoots, he scores. Number 11 doing the honors, Thomas Raider, and a uh, couple of Raiders on this team. That go low, young fella. Andrew Escobar, he shoots, he scores. Freeman in control. Wide open spaces against this defense, too. And then firing a blistering shot, and he shoots, he scores. Jim Apick on attack. The 5'9 junior makes it count, and the Mavs are off to the races in transition. Oh, there really ain't nobody better. Number 30 puts a biscuit in the basket. It's Colton Jacoby. And the sophomore attacker gets on the score sheet. More maps. Pretty much all maps. He shoots, he scores. Bobby Fishburn. And just a freshman, so he's got three more years. 5 nothing Freeman over the Rapids at this point in the first quarter. Still in the first. We got more Freeman. The pass, and then the ground ball shot. I like it. Wit Raider. Wit Raider and Thomas Raider both getting on the board. Where would Freeman be without a pair of Raiders? I don't know. Second quarter, 6 0. Mavs. Little juke. Firing, finding the back of the net. He shoots, he scores. Escobar. Andrew gets it done again. Then, same story. 99 got a stick on that. They gave the goal to Escobar, but 99 should get credit with that goal. It goes in. He scores, and then firing from long distance. Everything's going in. They are on fire. This time, Zachary Stewart, the junior midfielder. He shoots, and he scores. Mavs take care of business. They crush James River. 19-5 to 5. Let's go to baseball now. Tucker at home taking on Powhatan. A little Monday evening battle on the mound. And this pitcher's been doing great things for Tucker. Winners of two straight. JT Helberg gets a strike him out, sit him down. That uh, is actions in the second. We go top three, though. Powhatan Indians with a chance here. He gets a strike out there, does Helberg. Powhatan, though. Would get it going. Runner on third now after the runners advance. The wild pitch scores a runner. And uh, number three crosses the plate. It's one nothing after two and a half. This guy on the mound was dazzling. He had everything going his way. Connor Hedgepath. Strike out. Sit him down. Number 10 goes down looking. William Karani. And then that ball's well struck. One of the few well hit balls all day off of Hedgepath. But uh, always good to have defense. Tucker goes to a new pitcher in the next inning. That ball is hit deep and off the wall. And here comes a runner to score. It's number nine. He comes home in Andrew Shiflet. And uh, that'll work for the RBI. Great D here getting the double play to get out of the inning. So giving up a run was Peyton Hinton, but that's all the damage. I mean, Tucker was in this thing. It's just a two-run game, but Hedgepeth stuff was just filthy. Tigers could not get anything going. Hedgepeth again paints the corner. Fastball, cheese. Just keep throwing it, even if they know it's coming. He threw the occasional change as well, curveball. Meanwhile, Powhatan looking for some insurance, number 24. Woo, Matthew 
Lehman gets into one and yeah, through the team dugout there. He's he's on with a single. The lead of this. What a play! Top play nominee. He was on the mound to begin things, but JT Helberg makes a great reach for the out, and he actually gets the double play. However, Powhatan's bats were not done, not just yet. That was a base hit to left. Later, runner on second. Going to throw to first that time. Low throw, first baseman can't pick it. Indians pick up another run. Powhatan in business now. And then that would lead to this. Another runner on third. Wild pitch. Run comes around to score. Number two, Rhett Boyer. That would make it 4 nothing. Bottom six. Tigers looking for their first hit of the game. Nice diving stop. But Tigers are going to get it. They finally get their hit. It's number six, JT Helberg. Of course, the ball goes into the dugout. So now you got a runner in scoring position. Tigers trying to do something with it, but they cannot. Strike him out, sit him down. And again, hedge pep was absolutely filthy. More hedge pep. This time the defense going to finish it off here in the seventh. And they take care of the Tucker offense. Tucker's two-win ga uh, game winning streak comes to an end. Powhatan goes on the road to get the victory. 4 nothing is your five. Remember, if you have questions or comments about the show, just send me an email to this address, sportswire at henrico.k12.va.us. And you can always follow us on Twitter and watch us on YouTube. I can't wait to see y'all next time on Sportswire.